Hello, welcome to Exotic Gardening with me, York Chris. And in this week's episode, we're going to be talking about why you should be growing marigolds. Now, I like growing lots of exotic looking plants in my exotic garden here in the UK. But why would I grow marigolds? Well, actually, marigolds here, like this African marigold behind me, is truly a tropical plant because marigolds come from the family Araleshi and they are in the genus Tegetes. And these grow basically from the southern United States through Central America into northern South America. And most of them actually grow in Mexico, Guatemala, so truly subtropical and tropical latitudes of the globe. And these plants are good as flowering plants in the garden, in pots, but it's the properties of their leaves and their roots I want to talk about in this video because there's quite a lot of sort of myths about the fact that these plants can be good for attracting or repelling pests in the garden and the greenhouse, especially in the vegetable plot. There are three commonly grown types of marigolds. These are the African marigolds, Tegetes erecta, French marigolds, Tegetes patula, and the signet marigolds or Tagetes tinifolia. Whichever type of marigold you grow out of these three all have properties which mean they either attract or repel certain pests and bugs. And we'll talk about those in this video. Tagetes patula, also known as the French marigold, is quite a small, compact annual plant which has a single or double flower in shades of yellow, orange, red, or potentially bicolor types as well. And the foliage on this plant is very aromatic. Tadisis erecta, also known as the African marigold, is a much bigger plant and it can grow up sort of to 30 to a meter tall. And it has huge globular double flowers, maybe up to five to 10 centimeters across. Tadisis tenifolia, are quite compact mound forming plants with lots of small flowers and the scent isn't as overwhelming as on the other types of tajitis, has more of a citrusy smell. Now, have you ever smelled a marigold? It's got a very distinctive, strong fragrance and it's not just the flowers, but the leaves themselves are very strong smelling. And this smell is thought to deter pests from going on plants and confusing pests because it's such a strong smell in the air that plants that might be attracted to brassicas or carrots or other crops may be confused by this strong smell and then decide not to investigate the vegetable patch, the greenhouse or other plants you may be growing side by side. So these plants are often grown mixed in with more valuable plants to stop pests being attracted to them. But actually, there's no true scientific evidence to show that growing marigolds in crops will actually deter pests. In fact, it's probably the opposite and they actually do attract pests. And this is a way that marigolds can be grown as a sort of a sacrificial plant in the greenhouse or the garden. And that's why I have grown them in my greenhouse this spring and summer. It's been so it attracts all the pests onto these plants and hopefully it leaves my other plants alone. And that is what I have found to be the case this year. I grow tomatoes in my greenhouse. I've got lots just to the right of me here. But all through spring, I've been growing annual exotic plants. I've been growing some vegetable plants and I've been growing some permanent planting. So things like palm seedlings as well. And in a greenhouse, often get green fly, aphids, white fly, red spider mite, slugs and snails, thrips, mealybugs, all those sorts of pests. But this year, most of my plants have been pretty much free of these pests, apart from aphids early in the spring before the marigolds were into good growth. But what I found is on the marigolds themselves, they have been attacked by pests. So they're looking pretty healthy and they are, they're in very small pots. They're very, very easy to grow. They 
germinate very quickly, it makes strong, robust plants. And on the foliage here, if I take a closer look, I can see some pests because I have found some aphids. I've also seen some spider mites in the last few weeks and slugs and snails loved getting onto these seedlings when they were much smaller and I lost quite a few to slugs and snails early on but a packet of seeds is pretty cheap you get hundreds of seeds in a packet and it's very easy to keep re-sowing and I found that overall most have grown really strong happily pretty healthy like I said some of the bugs have been attracted to them but other plants have been left alone palm seedlings, my tomatoes, my annual plants that I've been growing here earlier in spring and early summer are completely untouched by everything. So I think having these as a plant to attract some pests and be sacrificial is a good idea. Like I said, they're cheap. And then if a plant got really, you know, attacked by lots of pests, it's easy just to put it on a compost heap. And if it's not attacked by pests, you get these wonderful flowers that you can enjoy either in the greenhouse or planted out in the garden. There has been some scientific trials done on what the roots of these plants can do and it has been shown if you grow these in, not in pots like this, but if you grow them in the ground or borders or beds along with for instance brassicas, they actually do kill the nematodes that are in the soil that cause quite a lot of afflictions to plants like um, knot root and things like that. So it's good to have them growing in the ground alongside other plants if they're going to be affected by nematodes. I mean there are good nematodes but there's bad nematodes as well and these plants do deter and actually kill off those nematodes in the ground provided they are grown for at least several months before the plants you want to grow healthily are sown or planted because it takes quite a while for the chemicals to build up in the soil that are leached out from the roots of the marigolds. So yes, they are not the most sort of iconic, exotic plants that you might grow in the garden and they might be seen as quite traditional and old fashioned, but actually I think they look pretty nice in little pots like this. They put on a very nice display and they're easy to grow they attract the pests away from other plants in the garden and it means that you can grow other sort of crops or other seedlings pretty easily without having to spray them continuously with chemicals. I'm not saying it's a complete panacea and it will deter all bugs from the greenhouse but I've definitely noticed this year that I've had far less infestations or bugs or anything like that in the greenhouse and they've attracted the beneficial insects as well. I leave the windows, doors open in the greenhouse and the hoverflies have been attracted to these flowers and therefore will also be attracted to the flowers, the tomatoes and other things in here as well. So I would say marigolds might be not your number one plant to grow in an exotic garden or in the vegetable patch, but give it a go next spring. Grow them from seed, so easy to do. Nice, colorful, cheerful, exotic subtropical plants and they will help keep the pests at bay. Thank you for watching this edition of Exotic Ghana UK. Join me next week where we're doing more in the garden.